Okay, hi, this is Mrs. Often, and we're here today to talk about trigonometric form of a complex number. Let's recall a complex number is one that may be written in the form a plus bi, where a is the real part and b is the imaginary part, and either a or b could be equal to zero. In fact, both of them could be equal to zero. Zero is also considered a complex number because we could write it as zero plus zero i. Now, every complex number can be plotted on the complex plane. The real axis corresponds to the x-axis, and the imaginary axis corresponds to the y-axis. And since every complex number can be plotted on the complex plane, they all have an absolute value. The absolute value of a complex number measures the distance from the origin to the complex number when it's plotted on the complex plane. So this dashed black line here indicates the absolute value of the complex number a plus bi. Just like in real numbers, the absolute value of a complex number is always positive because it represents length or a magnitude. If the number z can be written as a plus bi, then the absolute value of z is equal to a squared plus b squared. So if I had the number 3 plus 4i, and I wanted to take the absolute value of that, I would just need to square 3, square 4, get 9 and 16, add those together, 9 plus 16 is 25, and take the square root of that to get 5. This tells me that the complex number 3 plus 4i is 5 units away from the origin if I were to plot it on the complex plane. Now another way of referring to the absolute value of a complex number is the modulus of the complex number. And it's referenced using the letter R. And I think this is like R for radius, like radius of a circle, but I'm not totally sure. So we can find the modulus using the same formula given a plus bi, a squared plus b squared, take the square root, that's going to give you the modulus of the complex number. Now, the reason we have this is because we want to be able to write complex numbers in trigonometric form. This can make computation with complex numbers simpler to do. Okay, in this, r is the modulus. Theta is the argument. It's like a direction angle. The number a is equal to r times cosine theta, and the number b is equal to r times the sine of theta. So any complex number, a plus bi, can be written as r times the quantity cosine theta plus i sine theta. To find the modulus, as we've discussed on the previous slide, you're going to do a squared plus b squared, and then take the square root. To find the argument, you're going to use the inverse tangent of b over a. And it's kind of the inverse tangent. You may want to plot the number first because just taking the inverse tangent isn't going to tell you that it's the correct direction angle for the quadrant that that complex number is actually located in. So you do want to think about that. And just a note here, they're like vectors. Isn't that great? It's my favorite part of complex numbers. They're secretly vectors. They're just well disguised. All right, so we're going to write in trigonometric form these two complex numbers. Now, another way of writing trigonometric form is called r cis theta. And that's just a contraction of cosine theta plus i sine theta. Because mathematicians are lazy people who don't want to have to write things. If we wanted to write things, we would have taught English. So first, 3 minus 4i. Well, I'm going to start by finding my r value. r is going to be equal to 3 squared plus negative 4 squared. And then I'll take the square root. 9 plus 16 is 25, 
and the square root of 25 is 5. So that's my r value. To find my theta value, I'm going to do the inverse tangent of b over a. So here's b, negative 4, and here's a, 3. I want to think to myself first, 3 minus 4i, maybe even plot this, 3 minus 4i, that's like over and down eh, around here in quadrant 4. So I'm going to have an angle that goes like this into quadrant 4. All right, so now I'll do inverse tangent, negative 4 over 3. And I'll round this off to the closest tenth of a degree. So seventy-one, negative seventy-one point six degrees. Okay, obviously that's my reference angle. So I'm gonna find my quadrant four angle, and it is I'm sorry, this is an error. This is negative 53.1, but still, this is a reference angle. So in order to find my actual angle, I'll do 360 degrees minus 53.1, and I get 306.9 degrees. Writing this complex number in the trigonometric form, it would be 5 times cosine 306.9 plus i sine 306.9. Now, if you don't believe this is true, then what you can do, and I encourage you to do this, is to go ahead and take the cosine of 306.9 degrees, multiply it by 5. And if I do that, I get 3.002. If I do the same thing with sine 306.9 and multiply that by 5, I get negative 3.999. So this is really, really, really close. My only error is due to rounding. So this is the trigonometric form of this complex number. My second complex number, negative 5 plus 12i, is a second quadrant number. So negative 5 and then up 12. It's probably going to be about here in quadrant 2. So again, I'm going to calculate the modulus r, negative 5 squared plus 12 squared. That's going to be equal to 169. So r is going to be equal to 13. Then I'll go ahead and do inverse tangent of b over a to find my theta, or direction angle, value. Okay, and so my inverse tangent of negative 2.4, I get negative 67.4. Well, obviously, in quadrant 2, negative 67.4 is not my angle, so I'll do 180 minus 67.4 to reflect this as a reference angle of 67.4. And I get 112.6. This means that the trigonometric form of this complex number will be 
13 cosine 112.6 plus I sine 112.6. And again, you can check by evaluating cosine and sine and using the distributive property to check and see if you have the correct answer. We also can use this to change from trigonometric form to standard form of a complex number. And all my slides are going to fall down. So I've written here in cis notation and in cosine plus I sine notation two trigonometric forms. I'll just rewrite this in the more expanded notation. It merely means 5 times the cosine of 180 degrees plus I sine 180 degrees. So cosine of 180 degrees is negative 1. Sine of 180 degrees is 0. So if I use the distributive property here, I'm going to get negative 5 for my answer. You can write this just as negative 5, or you can write it as negative 5 plus 0i. Both are equivalent. In my second example, I have 7 times cosine of 45 plus i times the sine of 45. Cosine and sine both have the same function value at 45 degrees. Square root of 2 over 2. Now depending upon where you look up your answers, sometimes this will be in radical form, sometimes it will be in decimal form. Um, What's most important is that you're able to check and make sure that the radical form, if you've put it in decimal form, the radical form given in the answer is the same as the decimal form you may have obtained. Square root of 2 over 2 is, of course, equal to 0 0.7071 approximately. So I have an answer of 7 times radical 2 over 2 plus 7 radical 2 over 2 times i. And this is my standard form for this complex number. So I can write complex numbers in cis notation, which is the trigonometric form, or I can write them, which expanded trigonometric form, in the standard form a plus bi. And you'll want to be able to convert back and forth between these two forms flexibly. In the next set of slides, we'll be talking about multiplication, division, and exponentiation of complex numbers because that's where this form is going to be the most useful. So tune in for that set of slides next.